Today we will be sending a probe to EVE, it's a part of a side mission and while we're there we might as well check Gilly because, well, science. Yes, we will be covering the tech tree and updates that we will unlock. We will be showing how to build the probe that will be going to EVE. We'll show how to launch it, hopefully without too many shenanigans, and how to transfer it all the way to EVE and set up this interplanetary transfer. But let's get right away. I wanted to first do a Jewel mission because the story takes us to Jewel. However, we still need to unlock the science and that's why we're going to be taking the 3000 science intended for EVE. Going to the tech tree, I figured we need to unlock the modular launches because I do want to unlock the tech tree and we still have a lot of science that we have uncovered from Duna. So that being said, we did unlock the modular launches, which is 108857. And there are, I saw notice that there are a lot of missions with heavy landing. So landing a lot of things on the surface of Moon, Duna, Minmus and all other jazz. So. I decided to also unlock Xenon Propulsion for the future probes and landing and heavy landing utilities because we will need those for the upcoming landings that will be coming in future missions. However, today I was thinking to roll with the Xenon Propulsion for the probe, but then again it's EVE and it's close by and I just basically the laziness got the better of me, but I decided to design a probe that would be basically small size and uh, for it to launch with uh, something, you know, tinier, I need to go tiny size, like XS. And But I decided to go with a small and uh, put some science experiments, put two circular solar panels. Uh, I did put atmospheric science because I was hoping to get a little bit of science from the EVE's atmosphere. You know, just dip into the EVE's atmosphere and hopefully get the science from there. Uh, then I did put some reaction wheels and that pretty much covers what we have from science experiments and communications. Then we need two fuel tanks, terrier engine and that gives us 2.5 thousand meters per second of delta V. One way trip to EVE does cost us 14,000? Holy moly. Well, I actually, no, it's only to EVE surface. So without EVE surface, it's like six-ish. So that's why I decided to go with, let's say, 6,000. Let's put the two meter will be the rocket. I figured, you know, something like Vulcan Centaur, just, you know, the overall feeling of it. But uh, there we go, close down the fairing. And actually the yellow and gold, gold and, you know, translucent fairing is the color of the previous launches. So I decided to go with something different. And I decided to go with this ugly, uh, green uh, orangey thing. I might have already done it. I'm not sure. I'm gonna d double check my library, but I don't know. I'm just going with crazy combinations because, you know, it, it makes sense to me. Why? I'm still trying to make sense of it. Anyway, so we're gonna be posting now the Poodle Engine uh, to get us all the way to EVE. And now we're building the stage that will launch into orbit and hopefully eject us towards EVE. So, with that being said, this is the craft, this is the EVE Explorer, I'm gonna save it in a separate workspace and then I'm gonna be putting four wings and it has 8.4 thousand meters per second, which technically should be enough. However, I think, oh, we're gonna be putting two Clydesdales, this huge booster that we have just unlocked, I don't know, it seems a little bit excessive to me. I would rather go with the four, like, smaller ones. Yeah, that looks about right. What's the thrust to weight? 1.37 for the vacuum, that's 1.20-ish on ascent. I think it can work. And I technically don't need this thrust to weight to be stellar, so I think 1.27 will work and it looks good. The total delta V is 9.8 thousand, more than enough to get us to EVE a few times over. And uh, let me just put everything on the action groups. And I'm thinking first, let's go with the fairing enabled. Now let's go to the action groups. Oh, and I did want it to put this time, I wanted to put the lights because I was really missing the lights. And one of my viewers, thanks for that. He actually told me that if you press a five F9, basically save, you can enable the lights and then it, they will work. So it's a bug that if you don't save and reload then it won't the lights won't work devs if you're watching this please fix it i mean after all it's a bug not a feature 
So, there we go. This is the beautiful launcher that we're talking about. And let's get it launched. Deluge, igniters, and... Boosters! There we go. And let's accelerate it. I mean, you've seen this before. So, we are accelerating four times. I'm thinking this is gonna be glorious because this rec rocket is actually quite simple in its in its essence and I was thinking hold on there's something blinking should I do the science thing but I think I already got all the science from here I don't know it's just weird I I've pressed it so let the experiment you know do its thing but I don't think it will be necessary technically so that being said, yeah, zero, zero, and it's still conducting science. We are ascending onwards from the Kerbin. Let's go to the maneuver plan. We're going upwards, rotate, and there we go. 100 by 100 kilometer orbit. There we go. Pointing rocket maneuver prograde. There we go. Ditching the fairings. I do like when you put the more power into the fairings. They uh, get a little bit more, you know They get a little bit more power, you know separating All right sending the old unnecessary science that we never intended and then we're gonna be deploying the solar panels and after that we're gonna be pressing the burn so solar panels Look how beautiful they look I actually like the design of this probe and pressing the engines the fairings got left behind as intended you're seeing by the way the burns always in four times acceleration while the rest of the episode is in two and a half just to keep the momentum going thank you by the way for the comments i've noticed that you guys actually like the pacing and me skipping the unnecessary bits so it's good to know uh so thank you very much for that now we cannot launch to eve we are not in the right angle so what i'm going to go i'm going went to the actual tracking station and you want the er, kerbin and eve to close an angle of 45 degrees roughly so as you can see i'm now just accelerating time until i get a rough 45 degree angle and then i'm going to be setting eve as a target and then we're going to be planning the interplanetary burn usually i'm planning it that it's off axis basically it goes into reverse because we have to <clears throat> burn to the other side to decrease our Kerbal periapsis and by Kerbal I do mean the Sun so now I'm just trying to fiddle a little bit with the maneuver nodes I'm really missing the fine node planner devs if you're watching this please please I mean and even the plus one orbit those two tools I'm really really aching for um, the game is playable and it looks awesome, but really without these tools everything is much harder. And as you can tell, I have not yet installed any mods. I'm playing vanilla for as long as I can. I really want to play KSP2 vanilla. At least for the first playthrough. Now, that being said, let's go and kick off the burn. Poodle activated. You can hear it barking in the background. By the way, these are beautiful shot. I really do like how the, the probe turned out to be. <clears throat> Maybe in the future I'm gonna go with the Xenon Propulsion. Maybe even for the Jewel I'm gonna go for the Xenon Propulsion. I'm not yet sure. It has to be very, very, you know, high thrust weight because... And uh, Xenon Propulsion is not good for Jewel because it requires a lot of energy. So maybe I'm gonna go for, I don't know, Moho. Maybe Ike or, I don't know... Gilly, there's a mission. So we'll see. All right, finishing the burn ever so gently to get us ourselves an Eve encounter, which we did. Now let's focus on Eve and see how what our encounter looks like. So typically, my next step would be set up another maneuver node to, you know, go and little fix our Eve periapsis. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit more burning to lower the periapsis even more as far as I could. Now it seems like we are almost over its north pole. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna be setting up somewhere, let's say here, doesn't matter where, maneuver node. And then I'm gonna fiddle with the maneuver node by monitoring the Eve periapsis. So let's do that. Okay, and ever so gently press downward, see? 
the periapsis is moving. So I'm now monitoring the second periapsis and that one I want to get really low and really close to Eve because maneuvers here are really quite cheap. The closer you get to the Eve, the more expensive maneuvers become. So that's really one thing important to keep in mind. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go with, let's say 300, ish periapsis it doesn't really matter if it's 150 or 300 ish but that's it okay i'm pretty happy with it it's going to be burning in 14 days which can give us plenty of time to leave kerbin so let's take a nice picture and bye bye kerbin off we go we have our maneuver node set up and we just have to execute on that burn but we might as well as well enjoy some eye candy by the way guys if you like this episode so far, do fling it a like and let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and while you're there, you might want to press subscribe if you want to see more KSP2 episodes. After all, you know, YouTube might have unsubscribed you or you might be missing the next content, which might be coming soon. I typically post every two to three days as far as I can and I'm gonna try to keep that cadence as much as possible. And having said that, we are at our maneuver node burn and I'm just burning a little bit extra to get ourselves a nice periapsis. Skipping to the EVE encounter, I've accelerated time quite significantly and as you can tell, we are almost about to enter the EVE's sphere of influence and close enough. I have enabled the mission tracker to see the moment when our mission is complete. Bing! There you go, mission complete. 2000 science. Thank you very much, Chi Ching. However, uh, we're not done yet. When we're in the Eve sphere of influence, as you know, as a veteran KSP player, what I know, I want to first get the science that I can of these measurements, and that's science above Eve high. Then I would like to go get science above Eve low. However, I notice that I'm coming to the Eve in like retrograde orbit so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna burn for prograde orbit the burn is not that big of a deal it's 147 meters per second so i'm just gonna turn maneuver prograde let my probe orient itself in the correct direction and after that we're just gonna do the burn we don't even need to wait for the 50 minutes until we get to the mark just making sure that we put into the correct inclination there we go and soon enough our periapsis is 137, let's get it to 150. 150 where I think it's an ideal place. Now, let's go and uh, burn retrograde, or actually set up a maneuver node that will secure us an encounter with Gilly, because Gilly is another moon of Eve, and uh, just going there might secure us a nice and, you know, some extra science, so why not? Speaking of that, there's Eve, the beautiful purple temperance. I mean, for those of you that don't know, Eve is like the boss planet of the KSP for now. And it has been in KSP 1. It is one of the hardest planets to come back from. It's easy to get to. It's easy to get the science. It's hard to come back from because it has very, very high gravity. And it's an equivalent of, you know, our solar system's Venus. Not all of the facts are exact, but, you know, it's kind of there. Okay, let's get ourselves into an orbital insertion burn, which will secure us that we do orbit Eve. And it's going to be happening right about now. And the burn is actually quite hefty. It's 1.4 thousand of Delta V, so it's quite a lot. I mean, we could burn more to get us into lower orbit, but at this point I like to keep my inclination high and actually I like to keep my apoapsis high so that I can easily do a, you know, a phase shift, phase change, etc. So there we go. And ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived around E in the Eve orbit. Now, it looks kind of beautiful, doesn't it? Right now, observe, we have not yet collected the low above Eve science. That's still what lies to be ahead. However, I don't want to go too low above Eve, but I do want to go to Gilly. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go at the sending node. I'm going to make sure that I correct my orbital inclination. And then I'm going to be doing the burn. That will make sure that we do get an encounter with Gilly. Gilly has been notoriously hard 
<coughs> to get a good encounter because it has such low gravity that's so easily missable. So burning and actually getting these aligned took a better part of an hour to get the correct because you had to fiddle a lot with the maneuver nodes and all that jazz. And, but uh, I did it in a couple of, you know, like multi-stage rocket. I did, uh, I think, three or four burns in total. So this is the first one of them. This one is 518, which is correct at the orbital inclination. And then the second will be burning radially inward or outward, just to make sure that we secure ourselves a decent encounter. So there we go. You see 1A and 1B. This tells us how close is the 1A, which is our vessel, and 1B, where will be uh, Gilly at that moment. So now we have to create another maneuver node and just to make sure that we secure the encounter. So typically I, build, I burn radially inward and after a lot of fiddling, we will be reducing this velocity or this inclination, etc. So 63 meters per second, another burn just to make sure that we get a little bit better encounter. We're decreasing step by step and after a lot of fiddling, I managed to secure this periapsis. Time to do what I do best. Another focus on the planet, and after some fiddling, we have secured a periapsis of 7,000 meters above Gilly. And with a minor burn, we were able to secure that one. Okay, 6.5, 6.4, okay, great. Maybe that will give us low, low above Gilly. I don't know how much it will give us low above Gilly. But I accidentally pressed acceleration and look at this. It immediately went into like, okay, do you want some science? Yes, please. And it, it appears that we are flying at an incredible speed. So as we are passing Gilly, we are making sure that we are submitting our research reports and that's it. Beautiful, isn't it? By the way, there are lots of samples here, which we're of course not going to be able to return to Kerbin or Technically we could, but then what the hell would my Kerbals be doing? After all, the probes are only the predecessor to the Kerbal and um, Kerbal or manned landings. So, there we go. After some fiddling, we are coming to this last but not least point. Now we're getting the low above EVE science and we're gonna be trying to get from the EVE's atmosphere. EVE's atmosphere should start at 120 kilometers, so uh, you can see me reducing my periapsis in a several attempts, trying to go low enough above EVE so I can collect the signs, but not so, but uh, not too low so I don't burn up my probe. So there we go. Okay, while we are here, we might as well ditch this and do a little bit of extra burn to reduce our apoapsis as well. It is unnecessary, to be honest. However, I was trying to, if I reduce my apoapsis, I will reduce my orbital velocity as well. And then I had two more passes, I think. This was the second pass. When my periapsis was set to 94, I was worried that I'm going to burn up in the atmosphere. So I did accelerate and I was hoping to see if my science illuminator marks it didn't which resulted in another pass with this time significantly lower periapsis and i was thinking i was gonna go with not 94 but let's say 70 60 ish no problem let's try this let's see if that one will work so now we are 108, 95, and 87, 86. Ooh, 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 science, science, yes, collect, 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 send, 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 send quickly, God, well, yeah. We didn't manage to send all of the science, but we did manage to collect the 3,000 science that we got. And that those science we are gonna be using to up our tech tree. So what I wanted to do is 3.8 thousand science. Let's take the heavy rocketry. And I'm thinking I'm going to take also the heavy launchers because that one gives us really significant engines like Mastodon and others, which we will need to get this heavy stuff all the way there. And that gives us a 600 science remaining, which gives us a chance to complete a little bit of the tech tree. So I was thinking enhanced coupling and then maybe precision aerodynamics just to complete the tech tree. Well, there we go. 
I'll see you in the next episode where we'll be taking on Jewel.